Probably the most common shoulder uh, issue that presents in my practice would be issues related to the uh, rotator cuff. And uh, that can be a, a range of issues that can be as uh, minimal as tendonitis or bursitis, uh, extending to a partial tear of the rotator cuff um, all the way up to a full tear of the rotator cuff. If you look at the shoulder as having a ball, the rotator cuff is a tendon that comes over the top of that ball and it attaches right here. And when it tears completely, it pulls off, okay? And so we need to put it back. And so the way we put it back and when we repair it is we put little sutures and anchors in the ball and then we tie the rotator cuff back down to the bone. So that would be a full repair. And uh, a large repair would be if a large portion of this rotator cuff was pulled off or was pulled off further away. And a smaller repair would be if, if it wasn't pulled very far or sometimes actually it can be attached but only a portion of the thickness is, is involved. And in those situations, sometimes we don't have to do a repair. We can just kind of clean out the area or we can do a, a more uh, minimal repair. So rotator cuff injuries can have a wide range of causes and they go from being a kind of a condition that people develop without an injury where they develop pain over time because of a change in mechanics or, or a slight injury, they develop a degenerative condition of the shoulder that we can treat non-surgically. Uh, this can also occur from sports injuries such as uh, baseball or football, although that's less common. Uh, I've seen people uh, develop rotator cuff tears from a fall. Uh, an auto accident. And the inter other interesting ways I've seen people develop uh, tears is often when people are walking their dog, if their dog pulls their arm, that can be a cause of rotator cuff tear. In certain uh, professions such as hairdressing, because they're working up here a lot, they can develop chronic rotator cuff issues. So there's a wide range of people that can develop these kind of issues, uh, all the way from the, from the athlete to a more degenerative condition in, in, in an older population. In general, almost everyone goes home the same day. Um, and you go home and uh, usually uh, have some pain medication, a sling, um, and some ice or, or cold therapy to the shoulder. And if you didn't have a significant repair um, or kind of had just a clean out, then you might only need that sling for two or three days. That would be followed by physical therapy and usually recovery within about six weeks. If you have to have a full repair, uh, then we uh, utilize a sling for usually about six weeks. There's some misunderstanding to that in that people feel like if they're in a sling that they're completely immobilized. But when you're in a sling after rotator cuff repair, you can come out of the sling to, to type or to prepare food. We do often have people do some exercises or physical therapy during that six week period. So there is a period of six weeks where you are certainly limited, but not uh, significantly limited. The hospital here, we have great uh, experience with doing a high number of these procedures over the past 15 to 20 years. We have great equipment, we have great staff, and uh, we have great results. And so I think that for these kind of procedures, um, that the BI Milton is a great facility to have this work done.